All right, so this is a video to understand heritability better, but I have to be honest, I don't know if you actually will understand heritability better, but I think maybe you'll understand what you don't understand about heritability better. I don't know, this stuff's confusing, but let's get into it. Heritability is a technical notion, so the implications of the way it's defined can be very counterintuitive. And that's because the term doesn't really coincide with how we use it colloquially. So the proper definition is the proportion of the variation in a given trait within a population that can be attributed to genetic differences. And I see something like that and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, that, that makes sense. But the truth is it's a little bit more confusing than it appears. Let me just quickly go over what heritability is not. It's not how genetic something is. It's not the percentage of genes environmental contribution for an individual and it's just simply not the answer to is nature or nurture making a better contribution to this i think it's gonna be better grasped by an extreme example that shows why heritability isn't how genetic something is so the population i want to look at is five people and the trait i'm going to be looking at is the number of fingers on their hands and again the definition of heritability is the proportion of the variation in a given trait within a population that can be attributed to genetic differences so let's quickly put up the hands of our five individuals but our fifth friend here was a pretty sloppy chef when he was younger and when he was chopping carrots one day he accidentally sliced off one of his fingers so we see in this population that the variation in the number of fingers is entirely due to environmental factors our friend with nine fingers the reason he has nine fingers is entirely due to the fact that he chopped it off not because of his underlying DNA. So the heritability of the number of fingers in your hand is zero. And the reason this is a good example is because of course the reason we have 10 fingers is genetic, but the heritability of this trait is zero. And the thing I'm trying to emphasize here is not that heritability is a useless concept, it's just that it's not a measure of how genetic something is. And then as an example of what heritability is, let me do just an extremely simplified version of heritability. So imagine we grow two flowers in one environment and two flowers in another environment. In the harsher environment, the flowers grow two meters and three meters, and in the nicer environment, the flowers grow five meters and six meters. Those are pretty big boys. So the difference between the flowers in the same environment is three minus two, so one meter, and then six minus five, which is one meter. And then when we look at the differences across the environments, we see three and two meters, that's two and a half meters, and six and five meters, that's five and a half meters. So we subtract those out and we get the difference to be three meters. So to calculate heritability in the numerator, we put the difference between the flowers in the same environment. And then in the denominator, we put the sum of the genetic contribution to the variation, and we add that to the environmental contribution to the variation. So in this example, the difference between the flowers in the same environment is one, and the difference between the flowers in different environments is three meters. And then as if things weren't confusing enough, we have to remember that there's a gene environment correlation. And that's just saying that genes partly determine the environment that people are exposed to. So in the real world, genes in the environment have this crazy feedback loop that make it impossible to say exactly how much each contributed. So these terms apply to all organisms, but I'm gonna put it in the context of parent and children because I'm looking at psychological traits for the most part. So passive correlation is that parents who are typically genetically related to their children place children in certain environments. So let's say you're trying to look at psychopathy in a child. We well, have to remember that children with psychopathy are more likely to have parents with psychopathy. And by virtue of that, they're likely to be raised in an environment that's harsher. And then you have active correlation, and that's that people choose environments influenced by their genotype. So imagine taking a kid who's got a genetic predisposition to psychopathy, and he's got the option of hanging out with friends that are going to be a good influence in, like my boys in the math club, or hanging out with hooligans who are going to do shenanigans after school. So that child's likely to choose an environment that's going to reinforce his psychopathic traits. And then invocative correlation is that children receive responses from others influenced by their genotype, and then in turn, they interpret those responses differently. So for this picture, Picture an infant who's a really fussy child and he gives the parent a hard time. So in turn, the parents are frustrated and they're cold to the child. Whereas maybe that child's older sibling was an easier going infant and the parents were able to respond in a warm, loving manner. So now this infant who's already a fussy child is interacting with the frustrated and colder parent, which makes him more fussy. So to quickly summarize, heritability does not equal how genetic something is. It has to do with the percentage attributed to the variation between people in a population as a consequence of their genetic factors. So the main takeaways that I want you to take from this video is that heritability is incredibly complex and it's not at all intuitive. And I want to emphasize that heritability is not fate. It's not something that's immutable. And just because a trait is heritable and exists in your family or your parents, it doesn't mean that you're destined to have that trait.